Hi, and welcome back to the Industry Expert Series on PCB Data Management. My name is John Watson. In this episode, we're actually going to be looking at some common issues with PCB design workflows and how do we can actually overcome those. Navigating the PCB design process in the environment that we are presently in is like walking through a landmine. I don't know if many of you would remember, but many years ago there was actually a video game called Pitfall where a, ge a gentleman was running through the, the forest and what would happen is holes would develop in front of him and he had to jump them and navigate through them. Many times that's what it feels like to be a PCB designer in today's industry. We, but if we're actually prepared and we plan for those issues, that's half the battle, isn't it? The rule is if we're, we are aware of it, we can prepare for it. And what have been some of the prominent issues that we can look at that we can actually prepare for then? It's always good to, to have an experienced PCB designer that you can come alongside with and say, you know what, what's your advice? I talk to a lot of young PCB designers and I, I try to, to, to mentor them and teach them a little bit to be prepared for the unexpected. It will happen at some point it will, and it will occur. So these are actually a list, a small list of some issues that I've actually seen uh, and some of the major problems that when I looked at in my career of issues that I had wasn't pr quite prepared for. Number one, too many chefs in the kitchen. I'll tell you, there are a lot of roles involved in the PCB design process. There's the engineers, there's the mechanical people, there's the PCB layout person maybe, there's the, then outside of that your mechanical people and your procurement, your, your quality people are all involved in this, this process of creating this PCB actually. But I'll tell you what, one of the most important roles in all of them is the librarian. I actually try to be the very best friends with, the, my, with my librarian and try to accommodate them as much as I can because I consider them as one of the most important people in this whole process. I've actually been in companies where they said, you know, hey, we want to make it available where everybody can create components whenever they want it. Well, we actually set up that system. and. It wasn't long until within weeks, it was very quickly, we lost control of the entire content of our library and we had to reverse that decision. That was a very, for a, a major problem and an issue that I've seen is that too many chefs in the kitchen will actually destroy it. And having control means to have control of the team that you're working with. And Another issue that we had to d deal with very quickly actually was rogue libraries. I've spoken to you before about rogue libraries. These are libraries that people use, their personal libraries, maybe on their systems that are uncontrolled, unreviewed, and a lot of times they're used in designs and ultimately it comes back and causes issues in your PCB. My personal experience with libraries, I'll tell you, Rogue libraries especially. When I first, I, I started at a recent company and I tell you when I first went in there, there was actually 1,100 libraries that people were using, 1,100. That was uncontrollable, that was unmanageable. And we were actually seeing the results of those sort of libraries because we were seeing massive problems in our PCB designs and they all pointed back to this issue of rogue libraries. Give you the quick and uh, dirty answer, solution for rogue libraries, delete them, get rid of them. Use a single library. Remember our first pillar in our, our PCB design success is to be have singularity. I'll tell you another uh, uh, huge problem that I've always seen is establishing review processes and administering changes in our, your process. This is a combination of where you know changes are coming. So how, first off, how do you define those changes and, and how are you aware of those changes? And then knowing about them and identifying them and then establishing a review process to make sure that they were done correctly. That I find is a major problem because it's an, a constant battle 
to keep your data fresh and to keep your data active and usable. I, I think the last thing is a major issue is, is not using the correct software. There is a massive demand on PCB designers today to be professional. And a lot of times what happens is they try to use the wrong package. They try to use the wrong EDA software that, that doesn't have the capabilities to do what is required to navigate those landmines. I can tell you that my work with Altium has been phenomenal in believe, knowing that they have a tool that provides us with what we need. They have the tool to give us the means to accomplish it. We have a lot of demands in our time, our efforts, our training, our resources, and all this uh, different things. And Altium provides us with those. They come in alongside us, be our partners in this, this whole learning process and developing us as engineers. If you're gonna prepare for the landmines that are out there, the pitfalls that you're gonna hit, you're gonna to have to have three, the three Ps of the PCB design area. Number one, you have to plan. You have to prepare and you have to be proactive. You have, if you, if you let it, such issues as these will actually destroy your PCB design and your PCB data management. Understand that this is an ongoing process you never have an ending to this. There is no finish line. All you do is you com completely keep refining it, keep improving on it. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that you have realized that there are issues out there. There are things, there are pitfalls. But if you are prepared for that, understand that you can actually navigate them. And if we remember my, my little analogy about the game, the whole principle of the game was that each of those pitfalls that would open, he would maneuver around them. Know, the, know those pitfalls are coming and know how to maneuver around them. Thank you. In the next episode, what we're gonna be looking at is what kinds of sensitive data are involved in that PCB process. Thank you. I hope this has been helpful for you.